Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to get ready here in a second to introduce our panel, but I first wanted to just come out here and um, introduce the what we're doing today and tell you a little bit about it and tell you a little bit about our series if you haven't been here over the last few weeks. So every single year here at Word of Life, at this time of the year, we do a series called Mission Vision Culture, and we talk about where we feel like God is leading us over the next year and what that's going to look like in our church and so this year we have been we're going to be talking about continuing what Jesus started we're going to be talking about what it looks like to continue what he started what did Jesus start and so the verse that we've been looking at is in Colossians it says this same good news that came to you is going out all over the world it is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace so we have this good news that we know about and this good news that has been promised to go all across the world and so when we're talking about continuing what Jesus started, we're talking about bringing that good news to everyone because we have something good to share. We have a hope that the world needs. So in this series, we've been talking about a few of our core values that we're going to be focusing on this year. The first week, we talked about embrace the essentials. Embracing the essentials is embracing the Bible, doing Bible reading, praying. It's um, all of those things that are going to grow your faith. The second thing is commit to stretch, that we are going to commit to growing that means that we're going to embrace the difficult things um, in life and see where God wants to grow us over the next year individually and as a church. Third thing that we're going to be talking about today is build the community because we believe that God desires us, each and every single one of us, to be in community. And as you know that our world was kind of shook up during the pandemic and a lot of community wasn't happening. However, we believe community is incredibly important. And I wanted to um, share a verse with you this morning. It says in Hebrews, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. We need each other. We need to encourage one another, and we need to be encouraged. The church needs you. Each and every single one of you have something to bring to Word of Life and to bring to your community, your neighbors, your friends, and um, the person sitting next to you or the person in front of you or the person behind you. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, we're going to watch a video here in a second of Adam Warnkin. Adam Warnkin is a member of our church, him and his wife, Rebecca, and uh, they wanted to be a part of the panel today, but could not. But Adam had some really great things to say. So we asked if he would just film a video or put a video together of him talking about um, what he would say if he was here about community. So let's go ahead and watch. Good morning, Word of Life family. I was recently reading in Mark chapter 6, the account of the feeding of the 5,000, and was uh, encouraged by some things related to community and wanted to pass some of those things along to you. Verse 30 of Mark chapter 6 says, The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, Let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. I think we can all relate to times like this in our lives, maybe not to the extreme that the apostles did, but um, we want to get off to a quiet place. We're, um, we're feeling pretty drained, been around people a lot, uh, don't even have time to eat, maybe. So we don't have time, we don't have energy. I think, admittedly, in my own life, I, I feel like it probably least apt to see God move and do something big there, and um, probably not wanting to get interrupted from that time either. I think, as you'll see in this passage, that um, that's not quite what happened. In verse 32, it says, So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. 
but many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. What we see here is just that, that people are starting to see a difference in the apostles, and the difference is Jesus, and they're drawn to that. And it was an encouragement to me that, and a reminder that um, I want people to notice a difference in me, and I want it to be for the right reason. I want them to see Jesus, and I want them to be drawn to that, so that it's reflected back to him when, uh, when they recognize that difference, just like that happened here to the apostles. In verse 34, it says, Jesus saw the crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. So we see Jesus very quickly shifted from what the plan was to like, all right, I'm going to get away from people. We're going to relax, recharge to like, well, here's an opportunity. I got to get with people and they have needs. I have to admit in my own life, I, I'm not looking for those opportunities when I'm feeling like I need rest or this not a lot of margin, not a lot of time. But by Jesus' example here, this was not going to interfere with an opportunity to, to get with people and to make an impact. And it was just, it was both encouraging and convicting. It's a good reminder for me that um, there's, there's really no better priority than people and that we can abandon the plan, particularly when it revolves around ourselves. I, I think rest is important, but this is just a reminder that all my ducks don't have to be in a row to be able to get involved and, and to, um, to do what um, Jesus did in this situation, and that's focus on people. And verse 39 says, Then the, uh, Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the grass. So they sat in groups of 50 or 100. What I think here is this, that, that God brings people together and meets everyone needs, everyone's needs when we surrender to his plans. Um, I don't think it's any mistake that a lot of times we see food bring people together, um, needs being met bring people together. Um, even in communion, uh, Jesus broke bread, and you know it was it was a way of bringing people together. Pastor Tom, Megan, and uh, the leadership team will say, "Hey, stay after for a while. Have have a cup of coffee. Do those kind of things." And um, I think we can be amazed at, at what happens. At least I am sometimes when I prioritize uh, people over plans, and um, maybe sometimes when I'm more tired and I want to, you know, need to get recharged, maybe that's the moment I need to say, you know, Lord, use me in this situation. Bring me together with people and um, I want to see what you can do. I just want to pray for the panel discussion right now. I'm really excited about that. I wish I could be there, experience it, and I look forward to watching it online. Lord, we thank you for this time that uh, we can look over your word. I pray that the words that are spoken in the panel discussion would just resonate with your, um, your word. And that um, I pray that we would uh, go and find out. I pray that we would um, be able to surrender our plans for people, that we would not look at um, our full schedules as, as opportunities to get away necessarily, but maybe it's the best time to get involved. And um, Lord, when we don't see that there's gonna be enough, as we see in this um, account of the feeding of 5,000, when you're involved, there's actually leftovers. There's more than enough. And um, I just pray that when people see us in community, whether it's at work or at, um, in friendships or hear a word of life, that, that they, like the disciples, would, would be seen as having been with you and that that would draw people in. And that would be the reason that, um, that it's reflected back onto you and that you get all the glory. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Well, I appreciate Adam taking the time to make the video and, of course, praying for the panel. And uh, we've got a great group of members from the church that are here and love to, uh, looking forward to hearing what they have to say. So by way of introduction, uh, we have Alex on the end here. Uh, Alex is part of our worship team. Uh, he was part of uh, the team this morning. I uh, appreciate everything you're doing with the worship team, Alex. He's also one of our youth leaders um, and real busy with the high school students on Wednesday night. Uh, and real glad you're here, part of the church. Happy that you're able to come and share your thoughts and insight. We also have Miss Linda Confer. Uh, Linda has been a part of the church for a few years now. Uh, currently serves on the greeting team uh, and smiles real big uh, and is also a mental health professional working downtown Syracuse uh, and I'm sure we're going to have some great stuff coming from you Linda glad you're able to come be a part of this and we have Brenna 
Hey, Brenna, it's great to see you. Uh, Brenna has uh, served on youth team for a long time uh, and is currently really involved with the production team and is also a registered nurse. That's what she does uh, Monday through Friday. And at our big events, when we have a first aid station, you'll often see Brenna making sure that uh, any broken bones are being reset, um, any minor surgeries, uh, things like that. I'm, I'm misrepresenting things now, but okay, we'll move on from there. But um, delighted you guys are able to come and share, and I'm confident that we're going to get some great stuff and uh, possibly some real challenging things, but definitely some, uh, some good encouragement and insight. So glad you're here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start with Brenna this morning. Our first question, Brenna, is what's an example of building community done well? Um, so if we see and we look at the life of Jesus, um, he often looked for the needs of the people, of the communities that he was um, serving. And um, if we think of that within the church as well, um, I like to think about um, church cleanup day. I don't know about you, but oftentimes in that morning before going, um, I have to prepare myself and get myself out there. And once we get into the, the church building itself, um, just that could be a practical um, example of finding the needs within the church and getting it done. Um, and I just love um, watching the church um, grabbing people maybe they haven't spoken to before or don't know um, and having a purpose in what they do. And um, that's just one thing um, of community doing well, finding the needs. And that's just one example, but finding the needs within the community that you're in and doing something about it. Love that. All right, and Alex, what's an example of building community done well? Yeah, uh, like Brenna, I always, when you ask questions like this, I try to go, uh, what's, what, what, biblically, what are we looking at? And so I, again, look at the life of Jesus, that's who we try to exemplify, and I mean, the man, when his ministry first started, his, his job number one was building a small community around him. You know, disciples weren't disciples right off the bat, but credit to them, um, and kind of my point that I'm making here is they said yes to what could have been a very strange conversation. I could only imagine what it's like having a stranger walk up to you and going, hey, want to follow me for the rest of your life? Um, and then you're just dropping everything and doing it. But... Um, yeah, so I, I would say a, a good example of, of doing that is even in moments of slight uncomfortability, just say yes to an opportunity that presents itself. Um, I know for me in my own life, when I moved back here from Florida um, back in December, shout out to the Master Nardis, um, we were doing a 20, well, we have 2030s today uh, after church, but we, we did it then, and it was my first kind of... Uh, time back here and getting plugged in and uh we had 2030s but we felt that the the party wasn't over and uh, michael and nicole asking me being a stranger hey like you want to come over to our house we'll we'll feed you some more we're italian it's what we do and um i was a group of strangers that i said you know what yeah let's 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 hang out and get to know each other and in that moment of uncomfortability i made a bunch of new friends like instantly um, so great personal story of of building community done well but yeah I think uh, that stems from Jesus I love that too um, Alex because I love what you're saying too is it took initiative on your part yeah. to step out and put yourself out there but it also took the initiative of somebody else to also invite you in so it wouldn't have worked if it was one-sided, right? There's a both-sided type of um, or interaction happening there to make community. That's great. How about you, Linda? Well, when I think of community, I think it starts with uh, strong leadership, people that you can have communication and connection with. Um, I know the second Sunday I was here, Pastor Tom called me by name, and I was like, how did he know that? <laughs> it, it meant a lot. <clears throat> Also, I think about the Jesus Revolution and Chuck Smith, how he loved people right where they were, not uh, expecting anything from them, but just being who they are. We're created as social beings, and we find strength in numbers, so it's really important to be connected. So, Brenner, I'll put this one to you, is uh, what are some of the challenges to building community? Why doesn't it just happen by default? Why is it 
take effort, as Megan mentioned, some initiation. So um, what are some of the challenges to building community? Well, I think we can all think of um, many different things, but one thing that we all struggle with, especially in our culture, is time. Having the time to build community and um, whether it's you know your family, um, relationships that you have, your work, um, life events that come up, making the time um, to build community can be a challenge. Um, sometimes also thinking about the many generations that we have to consider. You know, a community for a 10-year-old is going to look different than a community for a 70-year-old. Um, sometimes, you know, we struggle with building community when we don't have, um, when we, uh, um, because we've been hurt by community. Um, we've had pain where we've been rejected by community. And um, other times, you know, having, um, being uncomfortable to step out of our comfort zones or to be awkward or to, to feel like we're gonna fail is, can be a fear of ours. Um, but also, you know, sometimes we think of community and we think of it as a place, a building. And oftentimes it's a mindset. And so um, sometimes it's about breaking down those mindsets that we already have um, that will lead us to building community. Um, and sometimes it's focusing on, um, it's not focusing on all the people we do know, because it's comfortable, but it's about focusing on the people that are um, on the outskirts. Um, sometimes it also means that um, jumping into community means um, that people are going to let you down, but Jesus doesn't let us down, and he's gonna give us the grace to love those around us who do let us down. Um, I think sometimes we put so much oomph into people, and we should, because God gave us community, but also we let each other down. Um, and we have to have grace for each other when we make mistakes or keep making mistakes. Um, and the other thing is, um, it's a struggle when the collective mindset is, what can I get, instead of what can I give? Um, a lot of times, you know, we're in our brains 24-7, so we think about ourselves. And sometimes we want what we want, you know, and what we feel like we need. And sometimes it's about first giving it um, to others. So. That's great. Thank you. And Alex, this is a, a big question, but I believe you're up to the task. Let's see. Why do, uh, why do you think our generation, so when we say our generation, we mean anyone that's alive today. Yep. So anyone that's a part of our generation, why do we struggle with connection? How much time we got? Everyone okay for three hours? I um, hope you don't get tired of my voice by the end of it. Uh, yeah, no, what, what can we do and say to that? I mean, I will, be, I will be the guy to say it. I think social media has a big, big part in that for a number of reasons. Um, for what social media started as, it was a beautiful thing. It was connecting people who, you know, I remember when I first joined up back in like 2008 to Facebook, it was, um, you know, you're finding friends that might have moved away. Um, you go to college and, and you're getting reconnected, but now instead of just being connected to people that you might have lost, it's more of influence. And so I think we're putting a lot of, um, putting a lot of our energy into being influenced, whether we know it or not, subconsciously or not. Um, and I think that has done a lot to our psyche. Um, you could probably speak to this better than me. But uh, I think um, even our intention span in this generation, I think all of us, you know, when something like Vine came out, if you guys remember that, we're talking six second videos and you just keep scrolling, and you keep scrolling, and you keep scrolling. Um, or, and this is something that I am a, I, I am guilty of is uh, say you're, you're scrolling on Facebook and you find something interesting and there's that see more button. Um, you click see more and then all of a sudden your whole screen fills up with words and you go, not today. Um, but I think that has played a lot into how we're also looking for community. I can explain this. Um, I think we're trying to, again, subconsciously or not, we're looking for community virtually. Um, back to the influencer thing, you see all these people on you know, YouTube or Instagram or Facebook and it's, hey, we're building our community together. And is that inherently bad? No. But when that is the only community you're getting plugged into and it's virtual, um, what, 
to what you were saying earlier. I mean, there's a social aspect of community that is so important to us as human beings, and if we're not finding that, um, it's just detrimental to our own health, you know, our own just personal being and the relationships that we form. Um, so I think those are those are a few big things as to why community is hard to build. But then going off of what Brenna said, it's challenging, too. And I think sometimes we, we are in such an instant gratification mode um, because things, I mean, as we progress with technology, technology is supposed to make things easier. And I think it's, it's doing both a service and a disservice because we're, we want things fast. I get annoyed with my phone when it's not fast enough. Um, and so I, I think that, that also plays a part into why community is difficult to build because it takes time and it takes effort. And sometimes we just want to keep scrolling. Yeah, and one of the things I have as a follow-up question for you, we can all clap. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I have a question for you too, um, Alex, in regards to that, because I think that that's so true, right? Is we're getting locked into communities, false communities that we've built online. Yeah. So if there's somebody in this room or maybe a few people in this room that have found safety almost in finding the communities that will, um, that feel safe, I guess, and it, that maybe feels a little bit safer than going out and connecting with people. What would you say to those people? Like, what is their, what is a first step? Like, what could they do? Yeah, no, um, while you were talking about that, my mind was just kind of going, it, uh, for me, I feel like um, the biggest part of community comes down to values. So find people that, that value what you value, um, and I think that that's your first step in trying to find a community that, that works best for you. Um, yeah, because if, if you're around people that not just like the same things you like, but when it comes to the core of you as a human, uh, I think that's the easiest way to, to take that first step to get plugged in, is just finding people who value, not just like, but value what you value. Really good, thank you. And then Linda, I have a question for you. How does a healthy biblical community look different to the world around us? Well, first, I just wanted to point out they didn't ask me a question about this generation. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Wasn't personal, Linda. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so healthy communities are um, people that reach out, connect see someone that looks like they're new or they're uncomfortable and you just uh, walk over to them and introduce yourself. It's as simple as that. Hi, how are you? What brought you here today? But I also want to point out that the world embraces discord, disunity, disruption, everything that Christians are the opposite from, where we love people, we care about people, and we want to support them. So I'd, uh, I'd like to ask Brenda another question, oh. if that's okay. Uh, it's about this generation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Linda. <laughs> uh, I would like to put to you the same question that we put to Linda. I really would love to hear your experience. Um, you know, how does a healthy biblical community look different to the world around us? I know that you work in, you know, work in a hospital. And great things happen in hospitals, but I also know that it's very different from um, a church environment with, you know, kingdom values and so on. And so I, I'd love to know what you think. Like, yeah. how does a healthy biblical community look different to the world around us? Yeah, I think oftentimes there's communities that are really close to the church, you know, and um, they don't, sometimes they might not look too different. And, but what really sets us apart is that we are all unified under Christ. And like, you know, we've, we've discovered that our, our country has um, really um, gone down the lines of, of, of separating each other and, um, and disrupting and um, causing chaos and, um, and dividing. And that sounds just like what the enemy likes. And um, so I think like what makes it different is that we can all at the end of the day we can look so different, have so many different backgrounds, different stories, but if we're unified with Christ, like, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so I think that's what ultimately separates us is the fact that we have Jesus. It's awesome. 
and Linda, I have a question that I was just thinking about that I think actually uh, might benefit everyone if you were able to answer it. But in your line of work, you work as a clinical social worker. So you work one-on-one -on -one with people. And since COVID and the pandemic, how have you seen that lack of um, social activity, the lack of community affecting individuals? Mm. So much more anxiety than there was in the past. Uh, there's more of a tendency to isolate. People weren't out for so long, now they don't wanna go out. They don't wanna be with other people. Or it can be the opposite, they just kind of run rampant a little bit. Yeah. So we have a third and, uh, sorry, we have a final question that I'll put to you and you can do it uh, rapid style. So your initial thoughts, initial feedback, but we would love to know what um, you would say practically. So what would you recommend for those who are new to Word of Life in regards to finding community or friendships here? So what would be your advice? If someone were to say, please, I want to find this community of which you have promised, how may I find it? What would uh, your practical advice be? So we'll start with you, Linda. Get connected, get involved, meet a new person, sit in a different place. Um, well, that would be more for those that have been here, but just reach out to someone, just one person every Sunday. Um, sign up for Life Path. Go to the uh, connection desk out in the lobby and just say, how can I help? Um, join a life group, but the number one thing is commit to show up. Be here on Sundays. Don't make it a question. Are we going to church this morning, but what time are we leaving for church? That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Brenda, what would you say? What would you recommend to people? Yeah, so um, just a quick testimony for myself. Um, I came here during college, and it was I came here because it was my sister's church, and um, I found myself in the first couple of years just being Brenna, Corey's sister, and that was like my identity, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, like I want to be known for me, and so I just kind of took this inward perspective, and then one day I was like, you know what, I just got to like, I need to serve. Um, I need to put myself to the to the side, and I need to give. Um, and so I um, signed up to be a youth leader, and there I found community. Um, so when you give, you do find yourself in your community. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes we have experiences coming into church, and we were, you know, welcomed in, and we were pursued. And sometimes we're we're not. And and if we're not. Um, I just encourage you don't don't be upset, but like step up and and, and um, reach out to someone um, and talk to them and, and tell them your story. Um, don't don't just creep into the shadows and, and dissolve. Um, we, we we desire to get to know you, um, and we desire to to build re relationship with you. Great, thank you. How about you, Alex? You want to say the question one more time? Absolutely. What would you recommend for those who are new to Word of Life yeah. in regards to finding community of friendships here? Yeah, I mean, the easiest one has been said already, and it's to, to get involved and get serve, you know, get, get to serving. Um, but I think practically what that can mean is, uh, is a little sacrifice, you know, sacrificing your time, sacrificing your effort, your energy, your mind. Um, you know, what, what does that look like for you? So, so uh, I know for me it was getting involved with the youth group. Uh, it was using the gifts and talents that God has given me to help further his kingdom. Um, but yeah, I think a, another big one is get the whole family involved. I think specifically, you know, if you if you got your family here, you know, we got amazing kids ministries, not just on Sundays, but Wednesdays too. Um, you know, if you're trying to find a community, sometimes you can make your kids do the work for you. You know, they'll make friends and all of a sudden now you got new parents um, that you get to hang out with. Uh, so yeah, just get the whole family involved, uh, sacrifice a little of your time, and it'll only benefit you in the long run. That's great. Well, come on everyone, could we please show some gratitude, appreciation for you guys. Thank you for being a part of this. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks everybody. That really was excellent. Um, so just last night, I was uh, at home. One more time, thank you everybody. You guys are awesome. 
Uh, last night I was uh, at home and my son Moses, uh, he's 10 and he's awesome. And he just said, uh, hey, I can't wait to go to church tomorrow. So I was a bit interested, I was like, hey, why is that, mate? And he said, uh, I can't wait to see my friends. And confession time. My first thought was, kid, we don't go to church to goof off with friends. We go to church because we're going to learn God's word. We're going to worship. We're going to celebrate what he's doing. We're going to get up. You know, that's where my head was. And then I was like, Tom, you absolute donut. You're spending the whole day tomorrow talking about the importance of building community. And here's your 10-year-old that's got it. Now, of course... Spending time in worship, spending time offering gratitude and thanks and devotion to the Lord and spending time, you know, learning the word. Of course, that's important. We've, we've already covered that extensively in this series, but there was something about what Moses said yesterday. I was like, you know what? He's got it. You know, and, uh, and the, the friends that he's talking about, he's got a really great group of um, friends here at church. And, you know, I got to thinking about that. And sure enough, like, they're going to be a good influence on each other. You know, yeah, they run around like little psychos after church. You'll see it in a few minutes for sure. But they really are. They're inspiring each other. They're talking to each other about things of faith. Even as little 10-year-old boys, it's, it's awesome to watch. And it's a great picture for you and me. The Learning the scriptures, of course it's important. Spending time in worship, of course it's important. It's the highest priorities. We've labeled it the essentials as part of our church environment, our church culture, and our core values. It's essential. But so is building the community. So is coming to church and finding people that you look forward to seeing. And so is coming to church and finding people that care deeply about your life and are invested in, in wanting to see you do well and seeing God's best come to fruition in your life. And a verse that stood out, and there's a number that um, we could have talked about today, but this one really leapt out as I was getting ready for this morning. John 13, starting in verse 34. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. The world will know. The world will know. We talk a lot about evangelism and outreach and letting the people of Baldwinsville and beyond know that God is for real and he loves them in an indescribable way. And one of the words from Jesus is that one of the ways you'll communicate this and show this and prove this is by being a community that loves each other. We're told that by loving each other and being a community that is built on love, that is built on, on, on a desire to see each other do well and see that God's best come out in the lives of each other, that that is the proof that God is at work in our lives. It is following in Jesus' example. He loved people. And as we do the same, we see great things happen just as he saw great things happen. If you're interested in coming to church and coming in and being a part of worship and being a part of a message and then drifting out and nobody learning your name. My friend, I love you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not angry at anybody, but you're going to feel uncomfortable here at the church because we are going to keep banging on this drum of you need to get connected. If you want to just breeze in and breeze out and nobody know your name and nobody notice if you're gone for a few weeks, it's going to start feeling uncomfortable. We're a church that loves you and cares about you. And we want you to feel that. We want you to know that. And we want to prove that. So this is a church where being a spectator and being a pew filler, if that's what you want, I, I, it's gonna feel harder and harder to feel at home here. But if this is a church and you wanna be a part of building this community of faith, if you wanna build friendships and relationships here, if you're here and you wanna meet other believers that you believe are gonna inspire you to pursue God with everything, this is a church for you. If you want to come and if you're having a tough time during the week, if going to work is a struggle, if your family dynamic is complicated and you want to come to a church and you want to find a sense of relief, this is a church for you. If you want to come and you want to meet people that may not be perfect, and here's the spoiler, none of us are perfect. Not even Shana. <laughs> but we're all in this together. We're in this together. Let me go ahead. Let's stand and uh, I'll pray and then we'll spend some more time in worship today. So many good things were shared this morning. Lord, whether it was uh, something that Megan said, whether it was something from Adam's video, the panel, that verse from John 13, whatever it may be, if something has grabbed a hold of someone's heart right now, I, I pray that as we spend time in your presence, spend time in worship, that Lord, you would continue to minister to people. Lord, the words of the speaker fade to the background. 
what you want to share with your people, what you want to share with people that you love desperately. Lord, that that grabs a hold of people's hearts right now. Lord, I believe that you're going to minister to people today. Lord, as we spend time in worship, Lord, if a challenge is needed, bring a challenge. If encouragement is needed, if boldness is needed, may it come to your people in time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everyone, let's spend some time in worship together.